Hello guys and welcome to the World Championship for BFME to the Rise of the Witch King with a cash prize of $500. We are still in the group stage and today we're gonna cast the best of 3 series between the red Dwarven player Ave Ave from Turkey against the yellow Engma player Erbi from Slovenia on the beautiful map Sakura Forest 2. We're gonna have 2 mills coming up for the Engma player at the bottom right side and two mineshafts coming up for the Dwarven player Ave Ave at the top left side. And yeah, we have still so many games to go in the World Championship. We are not even halfway through yet with the group stage. And we're gonna have like multiple series within the following days. If you wanna watch them live, you need to check me out on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash beyondstandards. The link for that is gonna be in the video description below. Alright, so I see two mills into the Hall of the Kingsman, into the third mill from Erby. On the other side, two mineshafts into the archer range from Ave Havi. Powerpoint wise, Ave Havi did pick the Rallying Call, and Erby didn't pick anything just yet, but most likely gonna start with the War Chain. Alright, Trial Master units, let's be honest, Engmar doesn't have too many choices to begin the game with. So pretty limited in terms of that. And there is a mineshaft from the Dwarven player Ave Ave. And that's an interesting playstyle. Normally, most of the time we see him, I mean we see Engma, the Dwarven player, I mean sorry, starting with the Hall of Warriors. Um, but I think Archer range can be a great choice as well. Because Extrovers, unlike Archers, can also deal significant amount of damage to the enemy structures. Oh, there is a bear family. <laughs> My mammy, mummy. And all the sons and daughters, I like it. There is a Viola, by the way, from Ave Havi. And the Extrovers are moving forward now. Gandabats are moving forward as well. The first battalion from Erby. Uh, and he didn't build up a second Hall of the Kingsman just yet. Um, but I'm assuming by the time they're gonna be around this area, Ave Havi should have a couple of those Extrovers on the field to defend himself. No Warchant is ready, by the way and can be used for defensive purposes. At the same time, Gandabats are moving through the bot side, as Irby is building up his second Hall of... No, not Hall of the Kingsman, it's a Troll and Wolfden, actually. That means you wanna get those Wolf Riders on the field, which is reasonable. Why you asking? Glad you asking. Because he needs to deal now with Extrovers exclusively. Indeed, Ave Havi doesn't have any Pikemen, and he won't have any Pikemen any soon, because he doesn't build the whole Hall of Warriors from the Dwarven faction just yet. Luckily for the Turkish player, he will be able to creep this war layer at the right side of the river. As Gandabats are able to buy enough time from Erby. Smart move to not overcommit. He knows he can't deal the damage he's looking for. And at this point he will just wait for the reinforcements. The mineshaft is building up, but Erby was able to spot that mineshaft. Uh, and the builder from, uh, from Ave Havi is barely able to get away. Can he get away? Extrovers could be able to finish him off, but he's gonna go for the Wolf Riders. He's still being chased down. Wolf Riders, they're gonna go for a beautiful trample. Warchant was used as well. Two battalions at the same time. All the Extrovers are almost gone. The builder will be able to get away. But Ave Havi has to make sure to get Pikemen on the field really fast. Otherwise, it's gonna repeat itself all the time. Erby knows how to counter the units in Rise of the Witch King. He knows the weakness of those extroverts. He knows he can't beat them by simply spamming Ganzabad warriors. And this trample is devastating through the army from the Turkish player Ave Havi. The mineshaft is gonna be taken down after. And such a great counteracting here from the Slovenian player Erby. One of the favorites for the World Championship for sure as he went all the way to the finals in the World Championship 2019. And if you didn't watch this video yet on my YouTube channel, <coughs> the World Championship 2019, the grand finals between Mr. Smock against Irby, try to find it, you're gonna like it, I promise. All right, uh, the Wolf Riders are doing a great job. And the pressure is real, Irby has such a big advantage, and indeed, if you take a look into the current command points and power points, we can see that Ave Havi has currently only 400 command points available, doesn't have many units on the field, and is just building up now the Hall of Warriors. So, that means for the next minute, maybe even two minutes, 
the Wolf Riders, they don't have any counters. So Ave Have has to give up those mineshafts absolutely for free. He can't contest that. There is no way. On the other side, Irby has 450 command points available. Luckily for Irby, he didn't lose any of these starting mills at all. So they are all about to hit level 2. That's gonna give him more money, obviously. They're gonna be tankier. And also the command points. Normally a level 1, a resource building, like a farm, slaughterhouse, mallon tree, in this case also mills, giving you 50 command points each. Once they reach level 2, the command points gonna be increased to 75. And once they are level 3, they're gonna give you each one of them 100 command points. The builder from Avehave was barely able to get away, but the pressure is real. Taking a look into the minimap shows us how dom the dominance actually from the Slovenian player Erbi in the game number one against the Turkish player Avehave, who is normally a battle for middle of two player. The mineshaft is gonna go down, the pressure is real, and the first pikeman from Avehave is finally joining the fi uh, battlefield. But during all this time, Irby was able to get a second hole of the Kingsman up on the field. And I like the fact from Irby, I mean, I like the movements here from Irby. He doesn't take the fights, he knows he can't win. And he's only gonna take them if he's gonna be able to force his opponent back from this area to go for a beautiful Felvent Wombo combo. Pikachu, I, guys, I gotta, I gotta call Pikachu, okay? Sorry for that. Pikachu, do your thing, please. What a nice move here. Still many extra overs are on the field, and it looks like even with the Felvent, because Erby didn't want to go for the trample, he's gonna go for the trample now. Very well done. Um, he was not going for the trample because it was too risky, and against Erby, you need to pay attention every single second, because Erby knows how to punish his opponent for the mistakes. But Avi Avi, don't underestimate him. He was always doing a great job in all those tournaments, and I think he had the time. He needed to adapt to the playstyle of Rise of the Witch King. As a expert level battle for Middle Earth 2 player, he is doing a great job in this tournament so far as well. Rallying Call is available for Ave Have. And uh, Irby has 500 command points, almost 3 power points collected after Warchant and the Felwind. That's impressive. He has also a bit more command points, but again, the command points difference is going to be much, much bigger now once these mills are gonna hit level 2. I mean, those two are level 2 already. That's why he has 650 command points now all of a sudden. And they're gonna be harder to take down. And it looks like, I mean, the thing with the Dwarven faction is, Dwarven faction, you need to know, is the most aggressive faction out of all seven factions existing in Rise of the Witch King. Normally, the faction Dwarf... The faction who needs to face, which needs to face against the dwarves, has to play a little bit more defensively. But it's not being the case in this game number one in the best of three series. Because in this game, Irby is the one who puts pressure. Irby is the one who is, you know, forcing the dwarven player to play defensively. And you don't want that as a dwarf player. You wanna be the one who is building mineshafts all over the place. Who is the one who puts constant pressure on his opponent all the time. But that's unfortunately for the Turkish player Ave Have not being the case. Warchan will be used from Ave uh, from Irby. Gandavet warriors are here to deal with the pikemen, not a big deal. Smart move to not move with them. Deal with the pikemen first. And then he can even commit to take down the only level 2 mineshaft he has on the fields left. During all this time, Ave Have was going for a counter them, a counter attack. Snowbind will be used to protect this mill from Irby. And he's actually in a choke point here in which he can't get away, really. Waldo is joining the fight and I think everything from Ave Have will be taken down. During all this time, the pikemen are gunners. The mineshaft is gonna be the target again. I mean, uh, for now, Ave Have is retreating with his army and it looks like he will be potentially able to defend himself. Forgeworks is coming up for the Turkish player as well. This mill is being the target but not too many units are around and for the next Big attack from Irby, he will have potentially double buff with the Waldo being able to give leadership to those Hillman units, including the Extrovers, Gandabad Warriors, and Pikemen. I see two all of the Kingsmen still, both of them are still only level 1, so it looks like Irby wanna stick up with those tier 1 units. You can also later on upgrade your Hall of Warriors, all of the Kingsmen I mean, to level 2, or potentially those Black Numenorians, or to level, uh, to level 3 for the Dark Rangers. Alright, Irby is now going for a massive push. 
but I think Warchain is gonna be up on, yeah, it's gonna be on cooldown still. It was used a couple of seconds ago. I mean, he has the time he needs, and it looks like he won't even need the buff, because he has now leadership from Huvaldo being around the army. And the main units from Ave Ave are off position. He doesn't have any units inside the mineshaft as well as the first Forge work, uh, as the first battle wagon is coming out of the Forge Works. Is he gonna go for the Man of Deal? Because that's something they like to do most of the time, and that's gonna be the case. That means uh, Ave Ave has to be very careful. Felvin will be used. It's not gonna be very effective here, and he will be able to get away. The pressure is real, ladies and gentlemen. The mineshaft is gonna be taken down. Beside the couple of extra words he has on the field and this one and only battle wagon, there is not much left from the Turkish player Avi Havi. Erbi has the upper hand, he's also being able to defend this attack. The builder from Erbi might be taken down, but Erbi is also paying attention defensively. Nope, he doesn't, and the builder is going down. I mean, it doesn't change anything about the fact that it's a giant that there is a giant army in front of the castle, in front of the fortress from the Turkish player Ave Ave, who is struggling to defend himself. Extrovers against extrovers, but they don't have any protection as the Wolf Riders are diving in. The Battle Wagon has to be very careful. Is heal ability available? He has the power points he needs for the heal, which might be necessary. He can't afford anything right now. Has still 525 command points available because of those mine shafts around this area, but Irby now being able to see them, will be able to take them down. Waldo is level 3 already. This battle wagon is doing a great job killing those units slowly but surely over time, as Warchan from the Slovenian player Erbi is being used. He is not done yet. He wanna commit more and more, and will be potentially able to take down everything what is left from the Turkish player Ave Ave in the group stage of the World Championship 2019. I mean 20, sorry. <laughs> 2020 with a cash price of $500. And yeah, Erby told me the other day in Discord. By the way, you can also join our Discord community if you want to. We have a really, we have over 500 members now in Discord, boys. Everyone is kind to each other. We are communicating, having chat all the time. You can be a part of that. All you need to do is check the video description, the link for the YouTube, I mean, the link for the Twitch, and for the Discord will be down below. Waldo hitting level 4 now, 8.5 power points collected, 725 command points available for Erby, that's impressive. The battle wagon is still remaining on the field if I'm not mistaken, but this one didn't get any experience, I think, no, this one is the first one, level 3, that's just the second one. I mean, only two of them you might uh, be thinking, is this gonna be enough, but let me tell you that much, don't underestimate them, because those men of deal are hitting like an absolute truck. Rallying call was used, but they gotta be careful one time. I mean, all it takes is one touch from one of those spearmen, and you will see them getting killed within a second and a half. And Ave Ave doesn't have anything left, as he's still trying his hardest, his best, to expand around this area, to keep the resource income, to keep the command points high. The level 2 mineshaft, the last level 2 mineshaft from Ave Ave will be taken down next. Battle wagons, they gotta be careful. You are playing with fire, but I think in a situation like this, Ave Ave has to take those risks. If he doesn't, he just needs to watch, he can just watch those structures getting burned down from the army of the Slovenian player Erbi. We have right now 11 power points collected for Ave Ave. He can go for the Hobbit allies, summon, or for the Anza mine, which can be very good against the Ingmar army. Felvin will be used, but there is no follow up. He's gonna use um, the summon and the frozen land. Frozen land, by the way, undermine. That's what I was talking about. Frozen land is a unique land spell. One of those battle wagons has been taken down. Why are you asking? Glad you're asking. Because unlike Tainted Land and Elven Wood, it doesn't give you buff, it gives you leadership. Which in most of the situations can be more useful, obviously. On top of that, it slows down the enemy units. So when you, for example, have Wolf Riders and your opponent, for example, Man of the West has Gondor Knights and they are running away from you, you can use it on, to, on top of the enemy cavalry units to slow them down. Which means your Wolf Riders, normally as fast as Gondor Knights, 
will be able to chase them, catch them, and potentially kill them. Alright, we have still some units around this area, but the base here looks very empty from Ave Have. The Underman was doing a great job, though. Was able to kill a uh, couple of those units. Ave Have is fighting for the end. I mean, till the end. Which makes sense, because again, this is the World Championship. Every game, every win matters when it comes to win the group stage. And also, it matters so much if you leave the group as number one or number two, because if you leave it as number one, you will be fighting against the number two from a, a different group. But if you leave it as number two, you will potentially have a stronger opponent to face against in the round of 16, which, by the way, will have a double elimination. I was thinking about the format of this tournament quite a lot and I felt like, uh, you know, giving everyone a second chance could be a great thing because then we can see potentially some players losing in the very first round after the group stage but then getting the chance to fight back and potentially reach the finals again and potentially being even able to win the tournament would be very entertaining. And with that being said, you can assume yourself that we will have so many games within the next, you know, days, weeks, even months until we will be done with the World Championship. Which, by the way, will be one of them, if not the greatest tournament for Rise of the Witch King since many, 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 many years. Alright, so we have 500 command points. Ave Ave is fighting the, uh, till the end, but he has units. He has to deal with this units around this area. With this units around this area. And there is an army coming up from Erby also from the middle of the map. Which is very hard to deal with. Morgomi is doing a great job. And actually Morgomi is almost level 5 already. Morgomi has a passive debuff. The, the, the difference between passive debuff and active debuff is... Like for example active debuff is... Creebane from Isengard. Uh, Cave Bats from Goblins. You know, Mist from the Elven Faction in Shrouding Mist. Those are active uh, debuffs, they are also nullifying the enemy leadership. Unlike this passive debuff from Morgomir, which doesn't do that. But there are also passive debuffs like from Witch King of Engma or Witch King of Mordor. It is the strongest debuff existing in the game, which you know reduces the damage output from the enemy units by 33%, nullifies the enemy leadership and they lose also 25% armor, which is impressive. So more armor, more damage reduction and nullifying the enemy leadership, which can make you win those gigantic fights. Fully commitment on the fortress. I mean, uh, he can kind of try to delete that with the revealed. That's a thing for the Dwarven faction, as we know. He's gonna go for it. Heal is gonna be available as well. But it's a matter of time, as he was trying to go for a counter attack with a couple of units. Offense is the best defense, but it's not gonna be the fact in this situation. There's nothing left anymore, and that's gonna be the game number one, as we're gonna jump right into the game number two. Very well played by Slovenian player Erby, by the way. Beautiful. Let's get the game number one, number two, I mean, started, boys. Alright, the game number two between Ave Have from Turkey against Erby from Slovenia. The score is one. Alright, I just forgot to edit the scoreboard, but now it's up to date. Alright, at the left side on the map Forts of Eisen, we have the yellow Engma player Erby against the red Dwarven player Ave Have on the right side of the map. Erby is 1 0 ahead, that means if he wins that game number 2, he will be the winner of the hardest matchup in his group stage. Because, I mean, I don't know if you guys are following me now on Twitch for a while or if you are being a member of our Discord community for a while. If not, I will try to explain you within the next couple of seconds, because early on nothing crazy is happening anyway. Um, we were trying actively to split the best 8 players from Rise of the Witch King from each other. So we were trying to make like a top 8 player list and making sure that each player has a different group stage. Why? The reason is simple. Because, as you might think yourself, we wanted to make it the greatest tournament ever, and you can also... you can. You can make it to the greatest tournament ever with only the greatest players ever. And the chance that, you know, four great players on the top level might be in the same group kinda eliminates 
the chance of great matches later on. So we decided between we decided in this squad who are the best eight players from Rise of the Witch King, and we actively split them from Group A, B, C, D, and so on. And we obviously have more than eight players who are very great and on expert level in Rise of the Witch King, and that's why we have also players like Ave Havi who couldn't manage to get into the top eight yet, or players like Matthew Smirks who also didn't manage to get into the top eight. But they are very good players and they have at least the same chances to win as the other top 8. Anyways, Irby by the way was starting with Pikeman and going for the troll there at the top right side. Ganzabad warriors are moving through the middle and they will be able to pressure now from Irby. Um, I, I said Irby before, that's Avi Havi, I take it back. Alright, uh, we have uh, this time a different start definitely from... The Turkish player Avi Havi, remember in the last game on the map for uh, Sakura Forest 2, he was starting with the archer range and was spamming those extrovers all the time, which is not being the case right now. Uh, double Hall of the Kingsman, also different uh, starts here from Irby, who is adapting to the playstyle of his opponent. Why? Last game he went for the troll in Wolfden after the first Hall of the Kingsman, because he knew or he saw that Avi Havi was spamming extrovers. He know or he knew actually that he wouldn't have any counter to his Wolf Riders. Wolf Riders are the weakest cavalry units in the game. So they are not very good when it comes to fight against anything else but extrovers or potentially archers. They are not even a great choice that much against the gun against the guardians from the Hall of Warriors. I mean they are not bad, but you will need multiple tramples all the time to actually kill them. Because they have high defense, unlike extrovers. Alright, so Avi Havi is leading to the troll creep, uh, war creep at the top left side after being able to get this in under his control. Um, and so far, he didn't lose a mineshaft just yet, but that might change very soon. And luckily, he, was, he will be able to get another creep after creeping the troll layer already, which is gonna give him a decent amount of experience. We see already one of those pikemen are leveled, uh, level 2. And also a decent amount of power points. And treasure, obviously. I mean, how can we forget about the treasure as real pirates? Okay. Uh, the war creep is gonna be secured by... Oh! I mean, it's gonna be close. It looks like Avi Avi is gonna be able to get it. Nice positioning. I mean, you, you have to guess it, I guess. I don't know. I think the treasure is kind of dropping randomly. It was dropping kind of on top of the enemy units from Avi Avi. And don't underestimate the effect of the treasure from those creeps early on. They have such a big impact. They can make it kind of even if you, even if you end up losing one of those mineshafts. Getting two creeps with a bunch of treasure can actually make it very even. Alright, Ave Habe is going for the attack. The first push of the Guardians. And one Hob uh, Hobbit Battalion actually. It's all about to happen. And that's gonna first uh, force Irby to use his buff defensively. Um, this mill is gonna be taken down for sure. The builder from Irby has to be careful by the way. Those guardians are hitting like an absolute truck as you know. And if they touch you once, you're gonna go down. During all this time, Irby was trying his hardest to deal some counter damage. He was already able to destroy this mineshaft around this area. But I'm assuming this one is gonna be saved. And if you're wondering about the textures of those guardians, I am using the Rise of the Witch King HD edition since today. <laughs> so you're gonna see that pretty often in the future. A Temple of Twilight from Irby. That's interesting. After two Hall of the Kingsmen, and they are, one of them is level uh, 2, and he's gonna make those Black Numenorians. Black Numenorians are gonna be a great choice against the current army from Ave Habe, but later on, once he has uh, his battle wagons on the field, uh, how, you know, Black Numenorians, unlike half Troll Swordsman, they can get trampled down, and that means Battle Wagon can actually pretty much one-shot them. We have also King Brand on the field. I feel like heroes like King Brand, Gimli, are gonna be always a great choice against the... Um, against the Engma army, which is based on those Trailmaster units, because Slamshot can actually make sure to almost one-shot those Trailmasters, and the area of effect damage, as we know, is very significant as well. All he needs to do is get level 2, and this picture is also different, as you can see. Everything is kind of looking a little bit a uh, little bit different, but the heroes are gonna be the main changes. I mean, the profile pictures, like in Facebook, <laughs> is an updated one. Alright, 
So, we have Abe Abe sitting on 6.5 power points now after the great early game this time. He was able to creep the troll layer, the work layer around this area, the work layer around the right side of the river, the work layer around the left side of the river. So he got a bunch of creeps. He has 600 command points available. Sorcerers, mm, I don't think they're gonna be very impactful because King Brent is gonna be... That's that's what I meant. Because Sorcerers, they got one-shotted by the way. He just one-shotted the entire battalion with the slam shot ability. And they are so expensive as well. They cost uh, 400 each. From a structure you don't use otherwise. So that's like a double investment for absolutely nothing. And they are not very impactful before you get the upgrades here. Well of Souls and the Corpse Rain. With level 1 they have still some black magic action going on. But level 2 and level 3 is going to be the time for them to shine. King Brent is going to be able to get away. 4 power points collected after heal and rallying call for the Turkish player Ave Ave in the game number 2 against SDK Ervi from Slovenia. Ervi on the other side actually has the same amount of power points like his opponent does. He's gonna be able to capture this one under his control question mark. The hobbits are gonna make it out though. During all this time he's being attacked. This Okay he's gonna use the snowbind so Ervi was forced to go for all the 5, went for the felwind. Snowbind and the Warchant, which is gonna delay his 10 power point summon potentially later on, unlike unlike the, for the dwarf, uh, Dwarven player Ave Ave, who has already 6 power points collected and only 4 power points away from a potential Undermine slash Hobbit allies summon. 725 and the map control is great. And unlike in the last game, that's like a re you know reverse situation. You don't want to be behind against against dwarves because I think, yes, they are the most aggressive faction in the game. And you can also punish them really hard if you dominate the early game, as we have seen in the previous game. But if you ever are too behind against the dwarves, I have the feeling that they are that this faction is the most snowballing faction in Battle for Middle Earth 2, the Rise of the Witch King. By the way, this is still the patch 2.02 version 8.3. And the battalion has been taken down. And the sorcerers, they were pretty much a waste of money. As everything is kind of falling apart from Irby. I don't see her coming back from this situation anymore. He has 375 CP left. Almost no more units on the field. No much money left. He is being attacked all over the place. And I think that's gonna be very soon the end of the game number 2. Which is great for us because we're gonna see the tiebreaker game in the game. Number 3 between Turkey against Slovenia. Ave Havi against Irvi. That was a great performance from Ave Havi. I mean, he got the creep at the top right side. He didn't lose too much in the meantime. He was even able to save this mineshaft before. Yes, now Hobbits, Frodo is here. Samwise Gamgee is here. King Brand. We have also Pippin and Mary here, the gang. Everything is falling apart. And this time, good. Will, re will rule Middle Earth once again, unlike in the last game on the map Sakura Forest. This time, dominance on the map Forts of Eisen. Alright boys, we are jumping right into the final game, into the third game, into the tiebreaker between Ave Ave against SDK Irby. This time on the map Plains of Linton. On the bottom side of the map, we have the Red Dwarven player once again. Ave Ave against the yellow man of the west player this time, Irby from Slovenia. Irby was playing the two previous games with the Engmar faction. The first one he was able to win on the map Sakura Forest 2. The second one he lost against the same faction, Dwarves, on the map Forts of Eisen. And now for the third game, for the final game, for the tiebreaker, he decides to pick and play the Man of the West faction of Rise of the Witch King. Two farms into the barracks, into the third farm. On the other side we have two mineshafts, into the Hall of Warriors, into the third mineshaft from Ave Ave, at the bottom side. Rallying Call is available for both the players. This is Plains of Lindon, one of my favorites, I think it's my most favorite 1v1 map actually right now, uh, in Rise of the Witch King. It's pretty straightforward game, I mean map, we have uh, like in Forts of Ice and work layers and troll layers, but not that many. We have only two work layers on the right side and on the left side, and two troll layers at the top left side, at the bottom right side. Just like in the map 
Forts of Ice and those trolls are protecting those inns, which is again gonna be very impactful and very useful for the for the Dwarven faction because I feel like that the Hobbits are one of the, if not the best units you can recruit from those inns. Alongside with the Black Orcs from Isengard, Galadrim Warriors are actually also a great choice. But you can see here in the HD edition, those units are looking dope. They have shields and stuff, dude. That's crazy. <laughs> I like it. Alright. Another farm is coming up. Irby is going for the creep at the top left side. The builder will be used to lure the troll away from the lair. And as he is going back, he won't be able to attack those pikemen. Rohan's spearman units are not the greatest pikemen in the game. So having some help like this is gonna be very helpful. And yeah, the troll, as you can see, isn't able to attack. He lost already 50% of his health. Now he's gonna turn. But it looks like Irby doesn't want to lose any of these pikemen. He's gonna do that again. Um, the only bad thing here for Irby is he's gonna lose a lot of time. During all this time, Guardians were able to creep this work layer already at the left side of the map. There is a builder from Avehave who's gonna try to build some stuff around this area. This work layer, I mean troll layer, is gonna be taken down, but I think if Avehave pays attention, nah, I think he won't be there in time. Alright, um, barracks. Only one barracks, no archer range, no stables just yet from Irby, no transition. He might go for a hero in this matchup, which can be very useful. A hero like Faramir can be very useful here, or Boromir with the Horn of Gondor. But I would say even Faramir would be a bit more useful in this matchup. Because we have seen already uh, that Ave Have, or the builder has to be careful. We have seen already that, uh, that the Turkish player Ave Have likes to make those battle wagons with Men of Deal. And Faramir, who will be constantly shooting them down all the time, can be a great counter to that Men of Deal upgraded battle wagons. Alright. Uh, Rallying Call was actually used, and he will be able to. No, he was not using Rallying Call, it was Charge Attack, which is something like Rallying Call. It's a yellow buff, like Rallying Call. Might use it here, around this area. Rallying Call is still available for both the players. 2v1 situation is gonna be definitely in favor of the Dwarven player Ave Ave, who is not done yet. Uh, the charge attack is on cooldown now, as he was able to take down this uh, one farm around this area. This inn is under control from Irby. He can make those Galadrim Warriors, they cost 400 each. Are pretty solid units, and the King Theodine is gonna be the first unit. The King himself is joining the battlefield from the Man of the West player Irby. I think that's a great choice. King Theodine is not gonna be as impactful alone, all alone, like Eomir is. He doesn't have a spear throw, he doesn't have an outlaw leadership, but what he does have is leadership with level 1. There are not many heroes like him on the uh, in the game, by the way. I think like Elrond is one of them who costs much more than Theodin. Theodin, very low-priced hero, offers leadership with no limitations. Like, I know there are heroes like uh, Gothmog from Mordor, quite cost-efficient hero, but his leadership is exclusively for orcs. Theodin can give leadership to horses, to Gondonites, Roh uh, Rohan, Rohirrim, soldiers of Gonzo, tower guards of Gonzo, and every other unit in the game for the Man of the West. Uh, faction, but the pressure is once again real. Um, there is not a mine shaft around this area, but there is one here at the bottom right side or top right side, actually, actually in this case. And Irby keeps losing those uh, farms here, and he can't defend himself with exclusively those soldiers. Yes, they have a leadership from Theodin. Theodin can kind of trample them down, but he gotta be careful. He's very low. You don't want to face tank the damage for no reason. He's gonna make some more spearmen. The transition into the forge works from Ave Havi is all about to happen. The Ave Havi during all this time is pretty much untouched. Theodin has to go back a little bit. He's very, very low. Those Guardians, when they are level 2, they will have buff pretty much all the time with the rallying call and then the charge attack. They have Galadrim warriors now coming and joining the battlefield. They are one of those uh, one of those rare units. Infantry units. We know there are some. Uh, cavalry units like Rohirrim and Spider Riders, they can also bet uh, switch between SWAT and Bow. But the only infantry unit that is able to do that uh, is Galadrim Warriors and the Noldor Warriors from the Elvin faction, the special archer slash SWATman units. 
That's why they are very great, so you can always, you know, use that mode to deal with the infantry units from your opponent. And once you want to take down some of those structures, you can also draw the swords and fight. They are like the Elven Warriors from the Battle for Middle-earth 1, by the way. Okay, I mean, right now we have 500 command points for Erby, 6 power points collected. On the other side, 500 command points for Ave Havi, 9 power points collected. So, massive power point advantage, 3 power points, you know, from 6 to 9 is actually massive. Yes, one Galadrim warrior only, and the builder has been taken down from Ave Havi. That's actually great for Erby. You wanna take the fight because he has leadership advantage, but Erby has more units on the field. Here's a battle wagon now, and the pikemen are not in position. The trample is incoming, but battle wagon has to be careful. Rallying call will be used now. He's gonna go for the man of steel upgrade once again. And I, no, he's not gonna go for the banner, uh, banner, man of steel. He's gonna go for the banner carrier this time for the double buff action for his army, which is a very smart choice. Obita lies on top of the army. Oil barrel is being used. Aveha is fully committing as he should because he has such a big advantage right now. Erby has to disengage. Theoden is still alive. Level 3. Uh, Erby has only 8 power points collected, but he's gonna lose those farms now. There is no way he can save them. The hobbits are gonna get killed. Theoden is getting more and more experience. Uh, Lone Tower here would not be even that significant. I mean, yeah, you can technically put those Galadrim warriors inside of that. But I'm actually wondering why Erby is only playing with a barracks, only one barracks, not even a second barracks, just like his opening does. Because Ave Javier right now is playing with three production buildings, two Hall of Warriors and one Forgeworks. Uh, I think Irby was kind of trying to make more of these Galadrim Warriors, kind of to replace the archers, in, you know, with that. Uh, the builder from Irby has been taken down. Luckily he has leadership here with the Theodian being around. He's level 4 now, the King's Favor is unlocked. He can use that on his units to level them up, to give them experience. This battle wagon was able to get away. The Galadrim warriors are off position and the Trample is gonna be able to take them down. But they were again able to take another builder from Ave Havi, which is great. So two builders from the Dwarven player Ave Havi got killed within the last 30 seconds. And one builder from the Man of the West player Erby. 10 power points collected finally. He has not a terrible amount of resource collected right now. But he's very behind and he's constantly under pressure from the Turkish player Ave Havi. On the other side, we have, after the Hobbit allies, 8 power points collected already. 725 command points available. Double uh, Hall of Warriors and a level 1 Forge Works. You can also see. The, the Zealots are looking a bit different in this HD mod, which I really like a lot. Alright. So, Battle Wagons are doing a great job. One of them has the Banner Carrier upgrade on them. One of them has Man of Deal upgrade on them. The Builder has to get away. Irby is gonna be in the defensive mode once again. Uh, he was making one of these Builders back. Galadrim Warriors are healing up over time. I think they are... One of them is level 3. Uh, Theoden is around, I mean, Glorious Charge can be a thing later on, but we know um, at this point he can only defend himself. I don't see him being able to push him back any soon because he has mine shafts all around the place. And I took uh, a look into the minimap at the bottom left side, can show you that uh, Ave Havi is definitely the map control for himself. Um, in the game number three, after being 1 0 behind. And losing the dwarves against Engma matchup on the map Sakura Forest, he actually kept playing dwarves. He didn't change his faction after losing the game number one. And he was able to win against Engma on the map Pots of Eisen in the game number two. And now doing a great job also against the Man of the West faction from Irby in the game number three. Those battle wagons, they are very effective. Two of them with Man of Steel, one of them with the Banner Carry upgrade. We have now King Brent joining the battlefield as well. Irby is actually sending some of those units to at attack this area of the map. But he knows that there is a mineshaft and there is a potential army he has to deal with very soon. That's why he is forced to retreat now. But will this be too late? This farm is gonna be taken down. The one in the back is also pretty low. And Irby was forced to go for the rebuild and not, not going for the lone tower summon. 
Rallying call was used defensively from Erbi, offensively from the Turkish player Avi Havi. Three battle wagons, King Brand. A very strong choice against clumped units like this. Faramir is joining the battlefield. And Faramir and King Brand are pretty similar. If you just took a look at the abilities, they are looking so similar. The Wanding Arrow is looking the same way like this. Slam Shot. I think again in this situation the Slam Shot is much more impactful. But there are some situations also for Faramir that this can be very much more impactful. As for example in this situation, because Wanding Arrow is slowing down the enemy units. And which gave enough time to Erby to finish off the King Brand. And Marketplace is coming up, he has 525 command points available. 11 power points collected now. But the thing is, he doesn't have enough archers on the field to be a threat against those battle wagons. I mean, as long as Ave Havi pays attention, as long as he is not, you know, blindly diving in in the enemy army, trying to trample them down, I don't see Ave Havi losing those battle wagons any soon. 11 power points collected now. 525 against 800 command points by Ave Havi and nearly 15 power points collected. With 15 you can go for the Barrage ability, which can take down the entire army from Erby. Erby actually being able to hold himself quite nicely, but when those battle wagons are around, trying to deal the damage with only one or two units only is not gonna be enough. But also the fact that he can't really leave his side of the map kinda makes it very unfortunate for the Slovenian player Erby in the game number 3 in the tiebreaker. Alright, he keeps now some, uh, he gets now some tower guards on the field. Again, Erby exclusively playing with this level 2 barracks now. It's one of these level 3 farms. Grand Harvest purchased from the marketplace. Hobbits are gonna get killed as they are coming from this inn at the top left side. The troll at the bottom right side is still remaining on the field and is the last creep left on the map Plains of Linda. I mean, Erby has to witness this uh, mineshaft around this area. So whenever Erby is gonna be kinda too greedy and commits to that side of the map, Ave Ave can use this to his advantage and the mobility of those mineshafts to attack him from the left side. So, and I have the feeling that Erby right now doesn't have the chance in the army to split the army in two and be able to be able to defend both sides at once. And on the other side, also really important to mention, with defending all alone, you want to be able to win your games. The builder from Erby has to be careful and will be taken down. Tom Bombadil summon will be used offensively from Erby. Booyah! There we go, Sonic Sun was used. Knocking down those enemy units, not one-shotting them though. The farm is gonna be taken down and Barrage is being used on the structures actually. Being able to snipe down the, the level 3 farm and the marketplace. What is left for Erby? Erby has almost 6 power points collected but losing this marketplace with the Grand Harvest. Losing this only level 3 farm he had is gonna hurt him big time. The level 2 farm, one of the last, I think it's the last level 2 farm from Erby will be taken down as well. That's a massive push from the Turkish player Avi Havi. He already collected 5 power points afterwards. Tom Bombadil is gonna be gone now. And we have some units around this area. From Erby trying to deal some damage. I think it was still a mistake from Avi Havi. That sounds maybe rude, maybe wrong, but hear me out. Yes, the Barrage was doing a great job, don't get me wrong. He was able to take down this level 3, the only level 3 farm from Erby. He was also able to take down the, the um, marketplace from Erby, which, by the way, is very important to destroy. So the, the Grand Harvest is not going to be active anymore until he rebuilds the marketplace. However, even, even if he rebuilds it, he doesn't need to purchase the marketplace, I mean, the upgrade Grand Harvest anymore. But I feel like it could be still much more impactful. How you asking, glad you asking. You just force your opponent to defend himself, right? So you have your army here, trying to push the barracks with your army, yours, I mean, with battle wagons or whatsoever, and force him to defend. Then you use the barrage again on the same spot, but this time there are some units from Erby around, so you can actually kill them at the same time. I mean, nothing has changed. Ave Ave has still a massive advantage in the game number three. 
Six power points, seven power points. Okay, Rallying Call was used, but there is a giant army. Those Guardians are also looking different. Battle Wagons. King Brand is back in the business, level three and a half. Parami is level five. He still needs some more for level six. I can't see Theoden on the field anymore, but I'm pretty certain he's here. There, is, there he is, level seven. Actually, Glorious Charge is available, but he has zero uh, cavalry units on the game, uh, on the field. No Rohirrim, no Gondor Knights, no Stable. Um, he went for the Arrow Volley. So I think Ave Ave um, actually is gonna be safe for now from a potential Rohirrim Summon. Because Rohirrim Summon can be used with Theoden and his Glorious Charge. Glorious Charge is the best buff you can actually give to your cavalry units in the game. It gives you plus 300% increased armor and doubles the damage of your calf. Also works for Theodin and it always stacks with leadership and spells. So that means the leadership from Theodin with the 33% increased damage and armor will be added to that uh, massively buff. And the war chant or rallying call in this case will be added on top of that as well. Imagine for a second and a half how hard those Rohirrim are gonna hit and how tanky they're gonna be. Alright. Arrowwall is on cooldown. The blacksmith is level 3, but he can't afford to purchase those upgrades yet. He needs to make sure to expand a little bit more. Warning arrow is being used. That's what I meant before. It's being able to slow down the enemy units. It's a more powerful uh, single target shot, while slam shot is more like a like a AoE damage, which is like a splash damage, being able to hit multiple units at once. So better against units, Wanding Arrow is definitely better against heroes. Also against monsters is very important, causes target monster to flee, uh, slows down the enemy units or in this case also enemy heroes. Um, we have Gimli on the field, booyah, leave attack will be used, I didn't even see him, one of those battle wagons has been taken down by the way. High power points collected now for Irvi. As he's forced to retreat. Uh, Faramis was able to survive, but I can't see Theoden on the field anymore. I think Theoden has been has been taken down. The farms are getting demolished. There is no way he can keep them alive. A level 3 Barax is very hard to take down though. Has 6,000 health. Which is not gonna matter that much for the Dwarven Guardians. We know they are very... I mean, the Dwarven faction, I think, all alone is... Their specialty is when it comes... You know, against the structures. They are like a... They are like... Master when it comes to build and master when it comes to destroy, <laughs> so they are very impactful. Six power points collected now. He needs to Rohirrim allies. He needs that really badly. He's still nine. He's like a little bit more or less than nine power points away from that. Uh, Six hundred command points. He also needs to get his Theoden back on the field. Against nine twenty five from the Turkish player Ave Ave. Baric is gonna be available soon again. Forgeworks uh, is still level, uh, it's actually level 3, alright, level 3 Forgeworks, so he's gonna definitely uh, start buying some of those upgrades for his Guardians. And that's gonna make them nearly unkillable, because there are no Cavs, no Gondor Knights, nothing like that on the field right now from the Man of the West player Irby. He actually didn't make any other production building all game long beside this one level 3 barracks and he was having this in under this control for a while um, and he was making some of those Galadrim warriors 14 power points collected oh all right so he was just losing his farami i guess farami has been taken down that's unfortunate Gimli very strong level 4 uh, he just purchased the uh, heavy armor on those tower guards it looks actually pretty dope in the hd edition i like it Gimli is gonna be a monster with level 5, that's gonna unlock the Slayer, that's gonna increase his damage, his movement speed and his attack speed by 50% and that's gonna be absolutely fiesta, you can't get away from him anymore and you, he can always get away from you. Leap attack will be used, uh, not being able to kill those units as they're upgraded, Gimli might be in trouble, heal is available though for the Dwarven player Ave Ave as he's trying to disengage. They have now upgrades for every single unit. But unfortunately, no fighter upgrade, and it's not gonna be up any soon for the Man of the West player RB. But he has uh, now almost 11 power points collected, so he's getting closer to the Rohirrim Allies summon in the game number 3. RB is busy defending himself only.
We have 16 power points collected for Ave Have. In this at this point, he can actually start saving the power points he has for like an earthquake ability or summon. I don't I can't even tell you what you can actually get after barrage. If it's the summon citadel or the earthquake, uh, you can use on the enemy structures. I think in this situation the, the earthquake will be definitely more useful. The summon citadel can be also useful in some certain situations, I guess, because you can, you know, launch the mighty catapult, which deals also massive damage. One of those battle wagons has been taken down by those tower guards. 16, almost 17 power points collected now by the Turkish player Ave Ave. Full command points available, which is impressive. Gimli, still level 4. Tower guards are down. Upgraded guardians are coming. And they are gonna guard, they are gonna destroy for the Dwarven faction. And yeah, I mean, we have some level 5 units on the field from those Galadrim warriors. Indeed, they were actually killing so many units from Ave Ave. But is this gonna be enough? Now, those Guardians, they have also heavy armor purchased. I mean, at this point, I think he can always try to save for uh, King Dane. Which gives you also leadership with level one, so you have permanently leadership up, uh, leadership up for your uh, for your units. But you don't even have to do that because you can also make a battle wagon with a banner carry upgrade on it. It's gonna do the same work. Uh, Theoden has to be careful. His level almost eight glorious charge is available now for a while, but he didn't get the chance to use it. You know, not, not even once, guys. Just kinda unlucky. Alright, there is a mineshaft and Ave Ave is preparing himself for another attack. Barrage is gonna be available very soon. And yeah, he's kind of forced to make a choice. Is he gonna go to the back side or has, uh, you know, is he forced to defend the front side instead? That's what I mean. Ave Ave has such a massive advantage. More command points available, more units, more resources. Deep attack was used, arrow volley was used for defensive purposes. 15 power points collected now. Where is Theodin? Where are the Rohirrim when we need them? The blacksmith is gonna be taken down. Barrage is coming in clash this time on the units. Taking and wiping out everything what is left from Erby. Erby has still some units around this area. Rohirrim allies summon is being used. Theodin has glorious charge. Use it. Just do it. Can he do it before he gonna go down? Yes, he can. Rohirrim allies. And yes, he might be able to defend himself, but everything in the meantime is falling apart. You then gotta be careful. Gimli, <clears throat> very strong. Splash damage, knocking down those units, not a big deal for Gimli. He will be taken down though. That's what I meant before, the damage output from those Rohirrim is insane with the glorious charge. But the fortress from Erby is under attack. Will Erby be able to defend this attack? And even if yes, how will Erby be able to come back from this situation with only 475 command points? Rebuild will be used. Erby is fighting till the end. He has to. This is the World Championship. And that's the first game from Erby in his group stage. He has to win this one. But there we go. That, ladies and gentlemen... Was one of the worst, <laughs> sorry, but I have to say it, earthquakes I have ever seen. And for my defense, I uh, I didn't see one of you know too many times of this ability being used. But he only hit the fortress and nothing around it. Or oh, Erby is gonna defeat and demolish everything, and the game with that also the series in the best of three will be over. Pretty damn good, if you ask me, guys. And if you enjoyed this one, please make sure to leave a like on this video likes help out uh, help out a lot if this is your very first time on my youtube channel and you are trying to find more battle for middle earth related content in the future make sure to subscribe and help me out and last but not least make sure to tune in in the next live stream twitch tv slash beyond standards the link for that is gonna be in the video description below i would love to meet you in there take care of yourself have a fantastic time see you very soon again until then, stay beyond standards. Peace, guys.